You're here because you're stoked about the idea of giant predatory dinosaurs fighting. Admit it. Recognize that it's okay to think that's cool. We're going to use cutting-edge science to decide the winner of the ultimate theropod rivalry, Tyrannosaurus rex and Gigantosaurus carolinii. Our two dinosaurian gladiators lived very different lives. One was the final product of a lineage of medium-sized theropods that might have come over from Asia, growing to twice the mass of its next largest relative and becoming the most famous outlier in theropod history. The other was a big predator in a family of big predators, with a sauropod hunting pedigree and the firepower to match. Both animals were discovered in the 20th century, both have had a massive impact on human culture and media, and both are in the running to be declared the biggest terrestrial predator known to science. But even if the eternal arms race of mass estimation techniques does determine that one is larger than the other, muscle mass isn't everything when it comes to a fight. Ecology, physiology, terrain, and behavior are all crucial elements in a life or death battle. A matchup is most exciting when the competitors are at their best, so let's make our dinosaur rivals healthy, full-sized individuals in their prime. This is peak theropod performance, all stats maxed out to the biggest we've discovered for each species. And yes, we are allowing fragmentary specimens, since Gigantosaurus is only known from a decently complete holotype and a partial dentary, while Tyrannosaurus has over a dozen fully grown adults to its name. I know we're hitting the most contentious part of the fight right off the bat, but it's important to recognize that any size estimates we currently have are subject to change. Gigantosaurus's true size could vary considerably from what we know today, since its sample size is tiny, but we have a much better understanding of Tyrannosaurus due to the sheer amount of specimens we've uncovered. So here are their current sizes as of the most recent analyses by professional paleontologists. Dan Folks is a British paleontologist who specializes in reconstructions, including mass estimates, of extinct taxa. His most recent rigorous volumetric models for T. rex and Gigantosaurus had some very interesting results in April of 2023. Both the largest specimen of T. rex, Scotty, and the largest Gigantosaurus specimen, the owner of the paratype dentary, came in weighing 10.4 metric tons. After this calculation was released, I've seen other third-party estimates go higher, with 10.5 tons for Giga and even up to 11 for T-Rex, but I can't verify the accuracy of those numbers since they didn't come from actual paleontologists. For now, the best estimates we have are 10.4 for both, putting the combatants at parity when it comes to body mass. This makes the fight much more interesting. T-Rex, accustomed to maintaining a 2-ton lead over other megatheropods, can't rely on a size difference to win. So how well were these animals adapted for combat with other theropods? Gigantosaurus may have been a massive killer, but it was sleek. Longer proportionally than T-Rex, it took the sports car approach to massive predator, which makes sense given the animals it shared its environment with. Gigantosaurus lived in the windy, river-thick Gandaleros formation in Patagonia, Argentina, which also holds smaller theropods, crocodilomorphs, frogs, snakes, fishes, and most importantly, sauropods. We have evidence for three distinct sauropod species that coexisted with Gigantosaurus, Nopcospondylus, Lamaesaurus, and Andosaurus. I couldn't find any size estimates for Nopcospondylus, but Lemaesaurus seems to have been around 50 feet long and 7 tons, with Andosaurus in comparable territory. So, yes, it is true that Gigantosaurus didn't hunt Argentinosaurus. They didn't even coexist. But it very likely did kill and eat sauropods that were more or less its own weight class. Of course, all wise predators avoid attacking healthy adult prey animals whenever possible. Even if you could take down an adult sauropod in a 1v1, why would you risk injury when there are younger or injured individuals that will still provide you with a week's worth of food? Gigantosaurus didn't have anything to prove, it was just hungry. But if I had to put money on the result of a fight between a 10.5 ton Giga and a 10 ton Titanosaur, I'd bet on the carnivore most of the time. Gigantosaurus had a wide range of motion in its neck, giving it valuable attack flexibility, and its jaw articulation was far back in its skull, which acted as a lever to speed up its bite. Its teeth were long and slender, built for slashing and inflicting maximum blood loss that would weaken its victims over time. The strategy here when fighting a T-Rex would be to get in as many fast fights as possible and bite its time, staying out of range of its opponent until the blood loss tipped the scales in its favor. Would it be fast enough to do that? I always see speed estimates for Giga pop up saying that it could sprint at a dizzying 31 miles per hour. A study done in 2017 indicated that giant long-limbed theropods like the big Tyrannosaurs and Carcodontosaurs wouldn't have been able to effectively run due to biomechanical stresses on their leg bones being too intense. They would have topped out at around 12 miles an hour. If I had to guess, just looking at the two animals side by side, I'd give the linear speed edge to Gigantosaurus given its more slender form. Neither of them were exactly speed demons, however, and were likely in the same tier here. What about intelligence? A recent study by Brazilian neurologist Susana Herculano Huzel indicates that theropods may have been remarkably intelligent, based on neuron densities of their closest living relatives, birds. 
Her study concluded that Tyrannosaurus may have possessed a similar telencephalic neuron count to some modern primates, surpassing that of baboons. It's possible that Giganotosaurus was similarly intelligent, although it did have quite a bit less room to pack in neurons as its brain case was considerably smaller than that of its opponent. I love the idea of two problem-solving, aware, predatory giants staking each other out and using skills that they would normally reserve for hunting. Now let's take a look at Tyrannosaurus specifically. It's known from a much wider geographical range with remains discovered from Canada, the United States, and Mexico, so it populated a variety of environments. These include the subtropics of Hell Creek, the bayous of the Lance Formation, and the semi-arid plains of what is now the southwestern U.S. A broad geographic distribution comes with a broad menu of potential prey items. So what was T-Rex likely hunting? While there were sauropods in its environment, namely the enormous 40 to 60 ton Titanosaur Alamosaurus, Tyrannosaurus likely wasn't going after them. Some animals really are too big to hunt, even for a carnivore twice the size of an elephant. I don't doubt that T-Rex would have opportunistically taken down a young, sick, or injured Alamosaurus, but if it were specialized to hunt sauropods, I think it would have more of the sleek slasher build that Carcrodontosaurus piloted so superbly. No, T-Rex was a tank, designed to hunt other tanks. Where Gigantosaurus bit quickly to take advantage of slow sauropods, Tyrannosaurus's skull structure was engineered to generate astonishing amounts of power. Power that could pierce armor and explode bone. It needed such adaptations in order to take down living battering rams like Ankylosaurus and Triceratops, which were fearsome animals in their own right. Recent calculations put Ankylosaurus between 5 and 8 tons, and Triceratops at up to 10 tons, which is actually bigger than the sauropods that Gigantosaurus likely hunted. Then you add armor, tail clubs, and facial swords, and it's clear that T-Rex hunted a very different class of beast. It also pursued giant hadrosaurs like Edmontosaurus, which were fast, muscular animals at least as large as T-Rex itself. Hunting creatures like these selected for a predator with a bite force in a league of its own. A 2022 study found that Tyrannosaurus had a bite force of 48,000 newtons, an equivalent of 4.8 metric tons of force. The same study calculated Carcrodontosaurus, a very close relative of Gigantosaurus, at 25,000 newtons, or barely over half the force. The study sums up the singular power of T. rex in this paragraph. Carcrodontosaurus is approximately the same size as T. rex, but is here shown to have had bite force that is approximately half of the latter. Carcrodontosaurus is typical in build and skull proportion for a theropod dinosaur, so the fact that his bite force is only half of that of T. rex is more likely a reflection of just how unique T. rex may have been compared to other theropods of similar sizes. Tyrannosaurus had robust, conical-shaped teeth and multiple adaptations in the skull that allowed it to withstand immense forces. Multiple lines of evidence also point to habitual bone crushing and consumption in T. rex. So, we've established that both Gigantosaurus and Tyrannosaurus had effective biting strategies. But in a battle to the death, the first strike often decides the outcome. So who's more likely to get first blood? Gigantosaurus does have the more slender body plan, which may be telling, but the answer is, more likely than not, Tyrannosaurus. A 2019 study on theropod agility tells us why. Eric Snively and his team analyzed centers of mass and rotational inertia of over a dozen theropod species, including Tyrannosaurus and Gigantosaurus, in order to figure out how quickly each species could turn and how much power their legs could generate. Tyrannosaurus massively outperformed other large theropods in terms of agility and explosive power, to the point where Tyrannosaurus could turn twice as quickly as an allosaurus of equivalent mass. That includes Gigantosaurus. Essentially, in our fight of two full-sized adults, the T-Rex is going to be able to maneuver and react in combat two times faster than the Giga and connect a bite strong enough to pulverize bone. Things aren't looking too great for the Carcrodontosaurus right now. They're only going to get worse. A 2021 study published evidence of repeated facial biting in Tyrannosaurus associated with the onset of sexual maturity, indicating that intraspecific combat was a regular part of life for these animals. T-Rex was not only used to taking on prey animals with heavy armor and weaponry, it was also used to fighting other members of its own species. As of the time of writing, Tyrannosaurus is the only megatheropod that has fossil evidence of combat with another megatheropod, itself. There's also potential evidence that Tyrannosaurus experienced pachyostosis in its skull roof, which means that the layer of bone on the top of its skull was extraordinarily thick. This isn't something that's been studied in depth, but paleontologist Jack Horner noted the phenomenon in a Tyrannosaurus frontal in a recent social media post. If this turns out to be accurate, it may indicate ramming capabilities in T-Rex that would add another weapon to its already formidable arsenal. The evidence has been weighed, the combatants have been analyzed, and in this battle of kings, Tyrannosaurus rex would be the victor, even if its opponent matches its size. Gigantosaurus was a powerful predator, but it's outmatched in nearly every category here. T-Rex's bite force is twice as strong, T-Rex is twice as agile, and T-Rex was probably smarter. Heck, its senses are even among the best in the animal kingdom, although that likely isn't combat applicable. 
Its physical advantages, combined with its experience as a giant theropod that consistently fought other giant theropods, would give it the win at least 70% of the time against Gigantosaurus, and a much higher chance against any other theropod. Thanks for watching! Please comment with your opinion of how this fight would go! Subscribe for more paleontology content, and join the channel to gain access to exclusive emojis, loyalty badges, and early access to videos. You're also invited to join the Vividend Discord server and subreddit with links in the description. If the idea of two giant carnivores battling it out sounds cool, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you next time.